Hello and happy November. We're going to be talking about how to find all possible rational zeros of a higher order polynomial. So let's get to work, let's do it. Now we're only finding all possible. Okay, so uh, some polynomials don't have any rational zeros but we're going to find all the possible rational zeros if the polynomial does have rational zeros. We have to wait to find out what those are until the next lesson. So let's get to work. So here's how this works. This is a higher order polynomial, fifth degree. We don't have a, a little um, formula for factoring fifth degree polynomials, but we want to find the rational zeros, which really is the reason for factoring. You always hope to find rational zeros, because they're easier to find on the x-axis. They're just easier all the way around. OK, but we can't be sure that those rational zeros even exist. What we're going to do is find a pool of numbers or a list of numbers that it include, OK, all the numbers such that if there are rational zeros for a particular polynomial, they are guaranteed to be in that list. OK, so here's how it works. We're going to be finding our P's and Q's. My mother used to say, you better mind your P's and Q's, young lady, or you're going to get a spanking. Well, here are the P's and Q's, and maybe that's how that old saying got started. P consists of all the factors of the constant at the right end of the polynomial. Q consists of all the factors of the leading coefficient, which here is just one. So what P is going to equal is positive or negative one, positive or negative three, positive or negative five, and positive or negative 15, because 15 equals 1 times 15 and 3 times 5. Those are the only integer factors of 15. Now, on the other hand, Q being 1 is going to, well, I mean, the leading coefficient is 1, therefore, Q is going to be just positive or negative 1. Not very exciting. Now, our list of all possible rational zeros is, come, is going to come from making a fraction or a ratio of all the P's over all the Q's. This is the key to finding the list of all possible <clears throat> rational zeros. And this is what it looks like when you do it. P over Q equals plus or minus, and I put a squiggle here or a brace because I'm finding the set of all the P's over Q, all the P over Q's. So positive or negative, I put it out there so I don't have to write it in front of every single number. One, three, five, or 15 over one. Well, what is that? That's going to be 1, 3, 5, or 15. So there are eight possibilities here for rational zeros. 
positive or negative one, positive or negative three, positive or negative five, positive or negative 15. That's the list of all possible rational zeros. Now this polynomial might not have any rational zeros. Its zeros might be um, either irrational or they might be complex conjugate. And since it's an odd power, it probably does have at least one rational zero. And I'll explain all of that later. Actually, we can explain it now. Irrational zeros. I'd rather write it black. Irrational zeros. As you already know, always occur in pairs when they occur at all, when the coefficients of the polynomial are just rational numbers. Integers are rational numbers, and these coefficients are integers. Okay, so irrational zeros occur in pairs. So do complex conjugate zeros. Or I should say complex zeros occur in pairs and those are what? Complex conjugate. And when your coefficients are real numbers, that's when you're guaranteed to have complex conjugate pairs. Complex zeros occur in pairs. That being the case, if the power is five, <clears throat> and maybe you've got four irrational zeros, two sets of pairs, well, that would be four. What about the other one that makes five? See, same for complex conjugate zeros. They occur in pairs, but there's gonna be an odd number out that will probably be rational. That will almost definitely be rational. Because there are only three possibilities. Real, irrational, complex, conjugate, or real and rational. So you kind of want to think of these things. Most of these problems, there are only three here, most of these problems are multiple choice. So one of your multiple choices will be plus or minus one, plus or minus three, plus or minus five, and plus or minus 15. And you would go for that. Let's put a blue box around it. OK. Now we're going to do two more problems. This example problem was pretty compared to what we're going to get. OK. Here we have a cubic polynomial. There is a long, ugly formula for factoring polynomial, uh, cubic polynomials, but I don't know it, and I don't know many people who have memorized it. So we're just gonna go for broke here. Um, you could try to factor this by grouping, but you'd quickly find out that you can't, I don't think. So, um, what we're going to do is use the P over Q method, where P 
will come from there and Q will come from there. So let's find the factors of P and the factors of Q. That is the factors of 10. You don't have to worry about the sign when you're doing this. The factors of 10 and the factors of 21. The reason you don't have to worry about the sign is that we take positive and negative anyway. Okay, 10 equals one times 10 and two times five. So P will equal plus or minus one, plus or minus two, plus or minus five, and plus or minus 10. Q will equal, well, let's see, we'll take 21, the leading coefficient, that equals one times 21 and three times seven. So plus or minus one, plus or minus three, plus or minus seven, and plus or minus 21. What we need is a list of P over Q. And so the easiest way to do the calculations is this. Put your plus or minus on the outside of a brace and then do what I'm about to do. Take all the P's. This is a kind of a code to remind me what I'm doing. One, two, five, and 10 over one. One, two, five, and 10 over three. One, two, five, and 10. Oops, over seven. My attempt at a straight line. And one, two, five, and 10 over 21. Now, what will that give us? Well, let's see. P over Q equals plus or minus one over one is one, two over one is two, five over one is five, and ten over one is ten. One over three. 2 over 3, 5 over 3, and 10 over 3. 1 over 7, 2 over 7, 5 over 7, 10 over 7. 1 over 21, 2 over 21, 5 over 21, and 10 over 21. Now that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 times two because the positive and the negative, that's 32 possibilities.
32 possibilities for rational zeros. And the maximum number of zeros you can have of any kind is three. So if that polynomial has three rational zeros, they will come from this list. Now, you're gonna see answers, right? This is multiple choice. And the way the authors write their answers, their, their possible rational zeros is this. P over Q equals, okay. Now, they take, for reasons I don't know, they take all the one overs together and then they take all the two overs together and then they take all the three overs together and then they take, well, there aren't any three overs, five overs together and then they take all the 10 overs together. So what their answer list looks like is this plus or minus one over three, plus or minus one over seven, plus or minus one over three, one over seven, one over 21. Actually, they go the other way. I've noticed that the way they do this, it's interesting how they do it. Um, let me erase this and start over because how they do it is like this. They start at the largest, okay, what in the list? One over 21, one over seven, one over three comma one. Now there's no rhyme or reason to that except it's the way they want to do it. So one over 21, one over seven, one over three, one. Okay. Then two over 21, two over seven, two over three, Two. And, and oh yeah, there's a plus or minus in front of each one. So plus or minus, plus or minus, plus or minus, plus or minus, plus or minus. But there's no better reason to do this than there is to do the way I was doing it. But it's the way the authors of the book do it. So we will do this, five plus or minus five over 21, plus or minus five over seven, plus or minus five over three, plus or minus five. 5 over 3 and 5. Okay, now, coming into the home stretch here, plus or minus 10 over 21, plus or minus 10 over 7, plus or minus 10 over 3, plus or minus 10. There you go. So I'll give you a hint how we find the rational zeros. We use um, synthetic division. 
Now, when I was a girl, I had a very mean Algebra 2 teacher. And what he did was he made us do each one. I think he was mad at us that day because a bunch of people hadn't done their homework. So he made us sit in class and use synthetic division on every single one of a whole bunch, a, a big long list like this. Yes, so I learned how to do this very, very well. And yes, as much of a pain as it is, you can do synthetic division with fractions and with irrational numbers and with complex numbers. And he made us do it all. However, of course, looking for this, you're just going to have a list of rational numbers, possible rational numbers. And how do you know when you get the zeros? Well, you get a zero remainder. But now in the days of graphing calculators, thank goodness there is an easier way. You graph the function and then you look and see what might be one of those numbers. In the end, you're guessing. We're going to do that next time but I wanted you to know there is a method to find the actual uh, rational zeros. Okay, here we go. I want to put number two by this. One more to go. One more. Okay. Now, while 16 is going to have a lot of factors, Seven is not, it's prime. So actually, I do want to do the P and the Q in blue. So P is just going to be plus or minus one and plus or minus seven. Because seven is a prime, therefore it can only equal one times seven. Pretty simple. 16, on the other hand, oh my goodness, 16 equals 1 times 16. Oh, it's not that much, is it? 2 times 8 and 4 times 4. Well, that's not really bad at all. That's just six factors. So Q is going to equal plus or minus 1 plus or minus two, plus or minus four, plus or minus eight. <clears throat> we don't repeat the fours. We don't repeat any of the factors when, when two of them occur. Just once, it's good enough. Plus or minus 16. So we have one, two, three, four, five, ten. Ten numbers there. But notice, notice there are fewer P's than Q's this time. So let's find our P's over our Q's. Okay, so I'm gonna kind of write my code that I use. One, two, four, eight. 16 over 1. No, that's P. See how easy this is to get messed up. No, no, no. P goes on top, which is what's going to make this easier. We're going to have one a little bit easier. 1 and 7 over 1, 1 and 7 over 2, 1 and 7 over 4, maybe it's not easier, 1 and 7 over 8, and 1 and 7 over 16. Okay. So P and Q 
are going to equal plus and minus. One over one is one. Seven over one is seven. One over two, seven over two. One over four, seven over four. One over eight, seven over eight, one over sixteen, and seven over sixteen. <sighs> and then there are always the answers you have to choose from. So here are all our sevens on top, seven, 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 seven. I'm just trying to answer the way the book answers. And seven, which is the way my math lab answers. Okay, now plus or minus seven over 16, seven over eight, seven over four, seven over two, and seven, and one over 16, one over eight, one over four, one over two, and one. So yes, now we can just write this as plus or minus seven over 16, or you can just look at the answers and find out which one includes these. But watch out because a lot of the lists look alike and maybe one or two unrelated numbers are thrown in. So be careful. So yeah, we don't need to do this. Okay. Well, these are the only three. This gives you the idea of what the first step is in what we'll ultimately be doing, and that's finding all the rash all the rat well, finding the rational zeros and the other zeros, and then writing out the factored version of the higher order polynomial. Yes. So synthetic division starting in our next video plays a very important part. So does your graphing calculator. So make sure you know how to graph. Isn't that a terrible thing to say, but it's true. Make sure you know how to graph. Review it. Or come to me or to one of the tutors and ask them. How do you graph on the graph on the TI graphing calculator or whatever kind of calculator you have? It will help you a lot because you don't want to have to do synthetic division on all of these plus and minus. Okay. So we will talk again soon. Bye bye.